الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى وشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد continuing with our class 30 themes from 30 verses of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as we know brothers and sisters the best speech is the speech of Allah azza wa jal and the Quran is the speech of Allah azza wa jal uncreated Al-Quran kalam Allah ghayru makhluq and today our journey with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it takes us to surah Al-Ahzab verse number 21 and we are going to talk about how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the best example the best example for the young and the old the best example for those in the Middle East and those who live in the West the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the best example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرَ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasized this in three ways. There is an oath that is understood but omitted. The lamb and qad. Qad yufid al-tahqiq. Three ways Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlighted the importance of this point. <coughs> Naam, as we said, an oath that is understood but it's omitted. The lamb and the qad. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا Indeed, in the Messenger of Allah, there is the best example. لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرَ وَذَكَرُ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا For the one who hopes in Allah and the last day and mentions Allah often. We're living in a time where the Muslims are in dire need of the like of this verse and the other verses that are similar to it. Because you find from amongst them those who imitate other than the Prophet ﷺ, even in things that are detrimental to them. You find some of the Muslims imitating the people of Fujur, disobedience, the people of Ma'asiyah, in the way that they talk, the way that they look. The way that they grow their hair, the way that they conduct themselves, their goals, and other than that. Whereas Ahl al Islam, we have the best example, as Allah Azawajal informed us in the Quran. And look, brothers and sisters, na'am. The more a person hopes for Allah in the last day, the more that they will imitate the Prophet wasallam. The stronger a person's faith, the more they will imitate the Prophet wasallam. And today, we have three books of tafsir that we will read from to explain this ayah, which is a very important fundamental foundation as it relates to imitating the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The first book that we will read from is Tafsir Ibn Kathir of Al-Hafidh Ibn Kathir Rahimahullah. Then we will read from the Tafsir of Imam Al-Sa'di. And then we will read from closing the Tafsir of Al-Shaykh Ibn Uthaymeen Rahimahum Allah Ta'ala, may Allah have mercy upon all of them. <coughs> Al-Hafidh ibn Kathir, which is one of the most classical tafasir explanations of the Qur'an. 
Because Ibn Kathir rahimahullah explain the Quran with the Quran, explain the Quran with the Sunnah, explain the Quran with the statements of the companions and the Tabi'een and the Atba'at Tabi'een and the Imma of the religion. And he did not depart from the way of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Al Hafid ibn Kathir he said, Hadi al Ayatul Karima, Aslun Kabirun fit Taasi bi Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fi Akwalihi wa Afalihi wa Ahwalihi. He said, This verse that we should all memorize. He said it is a foundation, a major foundation as it relates to imitating the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his statements, his actions, and his states. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was the best leader. If anyone wants to be a good leader, they need to study the biography of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the best husband. If you want to be a good husband, you need to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the best father. If you want to be a good father, you need to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and imitate him. He was the best teacher, an educator. He was an example in the way that he gave da'wah. We will talk about that later on. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the best example in every majal, in every arena. وَلِهَذَا أَمَرَ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى النَّاسَ بِالتَّأَسِي بِالنَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم يوم الأحزاب في صبره ومصابرته ومرابطته ومجاهدته وانتظار الفرج من ربه صلوات الله والسلام عليه دائما إلى يوم الدين He said that is why Allah عز وجل in this verse He commanded the people to imitate the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم on the day of Al-Ahzab the Confederates to imitate the Prophet ﷺ in his patience and his resoluteness and his endurance and his striving in the path of Allah Azza wa Jal and him waiting for victory from his Lord, the Messenger of Allah ﷺ is the best example. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرَ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Indeed, in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you have the best example for the one who hopes for Allah on the last day. Now, we will suffice with that. This verse, Aslan Kabir, a major foundation as it relates to imitating the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. And we should all analyze ourselves. Do we conduct ourselves like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the way that we interact with the people? The way that we talk. Naam. Do we imitate the Prophet ﷺ even in the way that we look? In terms of the Prophet ﷺ, we know he had a full beard. And he commanded the people to grow the beard. And likewise, the Prophet ﷺ, Naam. He would comb his hair. And other than that, do we imitate the Prophet ﷺ or do we deliberately leave our hair to become like dreadlocks because we want to imitate these drill rappers? And again, I say and I advise the parents, especially the parents, how is it that you have children that you're allowing to imitate these rappers? And we say that we, don't, we do not want, and we say that we do not want our children in these streets, but we have them imitating the people that are creating the commotion in the streets. It doesn't make sense. It is clear contradiction. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. We keep emphasizing this point because it is present in many places. Even some of the tayyibun, the fathers and the mothers who are striving, it's like they've given up. How can we give up as parents? We're parents. We're meant to do what's in the interest of the child. Not what the child wants. The child lacks wisdom. The child lacks understanding. The child lacks experience. That's why the child... When they are young, when they are a baby, they may try and put their hand in the fire. They need you because you're an adult. You know that the fire is hot to prevent them from doing so. Likewise, you need to prevent them from anything that's going to lead to those streets. 
And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the best example for the one who hopes for Allah in the last day and mentions Allah often. Yes, look, the righteous mothers of the past, the female companions, they would bring their children to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anas ibn Malik, his mother, she brought him to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to serve the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, to be educated and nurtured by him. And look at who Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an become. He became a mountain of knowledge because he was nurtured by ilm, knowledge and insight and wisdom, not by the streets. If we leave our children to be nurtured and educated by the streets, we cannot be shocked when they end up in prison. And may Allah protect all of our children. No, say to the Yes. What do we say to the people that say it is only a hairstyle, it is only clothing, it is only this, it is only that? Like Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah mentioned the outward influence. The outward appearance, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he said the outward appearance, it leads to inner resemblance. Tashabbuh, imitation with the outer appearance, it leads to imitation within oneself. That is why you're a step closer. Say for example, the child, alhamdulillah, is coming to the masjid praying, trying to memorize the book of Allah Azawajal. He's trying to imitate the Prophet والسلام, to the best of his ability. Likewise, he's trying to be like the righteous. That child, there's a big divide between that child and the streets, right? The one who's looking like the people on the streets, listening to what the people on the streets are listening to, on Instagram and social media, instigating beefs, there's a thin divide between him and those streets. He walks down the street with the mask on, the hairstyle, you know, looking like they all look with the same look, like they want to be the next thug on the block. Somebody walks down the street with a thoba and his all, alhamdulillah, and a kufi. Somebody driving past may say, you know what? You know, that's just a Muslim going to the masjid. Somebody dressed like that, looking like that, they may say, that's my ops, let's get them. How many examples have we had of that? Mistaken identity. How many? Mistaken identity, a person gets killed. But as we said, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, imitation in one's outward appearance, the way that we look, it leads to imitation within oneself. May Allah protect us all from that. Look, Ikhwan, people started in the last few years with the sense of nationalism, right? They were talking about this Pan-Africanism. Am I correct or not? It became popular since the killing of George Floyd. And you had even some brothers and sisters joining that movement, championing that movement. That's all that they spoke about. Do you know that some of those people now, their ancestor, they, they worship their ancestors, they're idol worshippers, they're pagans, they got statues, I don't know of what, in their houses? Look, imitation upon things that they may have taken lightly, look where it led them. They started talking, that's all that they spoke about. This Pan-Africanism, and it led to them, what some of them? Idol worshipping. They're idol worshippers, they're mushrikun. May Allah protect us from that. Shaitan plants seeds. The devil plants lung seeds. Sometimes we can't see them. That's why Allah is with wa ta'ala in the Quran, he gives us a manual to protect ourselves from the shaitan. Shaitan plants seeds for many years. And it may start, like the brother said, with something that we consider to be small. Anyone can have a child, but it's about educating and nurturing children. <clears throat> Imam Sa'di rahimahullah, Imam Sa'di rahimahullah, he explained this verse. He said, the saying of Allah Azza wa Jal, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرَ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Indeed, in the Messenger of Allah, you have the best example for the one who hopes for Allah on the last day and mentions Allah often. And Imam Sa'di, he said, وَاسْتَدَلَّ الْأُسُولِيُّونَ فِي هَذِي الْآيَةِ عَلَى الْإِحْتِجَاجِ بِأَفْعَالِ الرَّسُولِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ 
واستدل الأصوليون في هذه الآية على احتجاج بأفعال الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم The scholars of the fundamental principles of jurisprudence they cited this proof, this verse as a proof that we have to follow the actions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم We know the son of the Prophet is what? What is it, Talib? The son of the Prophet is what? What's the sunnah? Bilal, sa'id sahibak, Allah yahdik. Hadak Allah, where's Bilal? Fadl, what's the sunnah? Ma thabata anil Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min qawlin wa fi'lin wa taqreerin, naam. What is established upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from his statements and his actions and his tacit approvals. Wa anna al-asla أن أمته أسوة في الأحكام إلا ما دل الدليل الشرعي على الاختصاص به. and also there is a principle in this that the rulings that we find from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم or relating to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم they are general for the whole of the Ummah unless you have a proof to say that it's specific to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. That anything that is related to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam from rulings, they are for the whole of the Ummah, his nation, unless you have a proof, a clear proof, saying that it's specific to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Then Al Imam al Sa'di said, Al Uswatu Nawan. Examples of, are of two types Uswatun Hasana wa Uswatun Sayyah. A good example and an evil, bad example. فَالْ أُسْوَةُ الْحَسَنَ فِي الرَّسُولِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ A good example, the best example, the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. فَإِنَّ الْمُتَأَسِّ بِهِ سَالِكَ الطَّرِيقَ الْمُوسِلِ إِلَى كَرَامَةِ اللَّهِ Because the one who follows the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he's walking upon a path that leads to Allah عز وجل honoring them. نعم, if you follow the Prophet, Allah will honor you. Look at that, look at that promise, Ikhwan. And the ulama also, they derived it from a surah that many of you most probably have memorized. Ikhwan, move forward. There's a lot of brothers, inshallah, if we can come forward. Barakallahu feekum. Naam. Allah said, وَرَفَعَنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكْ And we raise you O oh, Muhammad he mentioned, Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah and others, they derive from that. Naam. The more you follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the more Allah azawajal will raise you. You will have a share of that. May Allah azawajal bless us to be true followers of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Naam. And this is the straight path. If you follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that is a path that leads to Allah azawajal honoring you. And this is the straight path. أَمَّا الْأُسْوَ بِغَيْرِهِ إِذَا خَالَفَهُ As for imitating anyone else if they oppose the Prophet Nam. This is what the brother asked about. <coughs> As for imitating. وَأَمَّا الْأُسْوَ بِغَيْرِهِ إِذَا خَالَفَهُ فَهُوَ الْأُسْوَ سَيْئَةً As for imitating other than the Prophet ﷺ, if they oppose the Prophet, that's an evil example. So that relates to anything. The Prophet said, let your beards grow. Somebody shaves the beard and you say, you know what, I want to look like them. I want to imitate them. That's an evil example. Somebody wearing like leggings for men, revealing the aura, revealing the aura. Somebody wearing like leggings, tight leggings, like for a man, and they come to the masjid revealing the aura, and we know the aura is exposed. Well, billah. That's an uswa sayyah. Likewise, dreadlocks and the like of these things, the Prophet used to comb his hair. Doesn't matter the texture of your hair. Whatever hair texture you have, it's beautiful because Allah created you with that. And we should not be ashamed of it. Barakallah feekum. And he said like the statement of the mushrikeen, evil examples, when the messengers called them to imitate them, when the messengers called them to Allah, they said what? Inna wajadna aba'ana ala ummah. They said, we found our forefathers upon a religion, upon a way, and we're going to imitate them. May Allah make us from those who imitate the Prophet wasallam. Because you have people now in various places, and it's not restricted to one community. They say, this is our culture. If the culture goes against the kitab and the sunnah, we throw it against the wall. It doesn't mean nothing. 
wa hadhihi al-uswatu al-hasana inna ma yaslukuha wa yuwaffaqu laha man kana yarju Allah wa liyawm al-akhir ikhwan that should be written in gold he said this good example this good example is only followed it is only imitated the one who is granted success to imitate the Prophet sallallahu are those who hope for Allah on the last day. Yes, if you're caught up in the streets and you're addicted to the streets and that's all you care about and that music and that culture, yes, you're not going to see it because your heart is blind. May Allah will protect our hearts. Look what he said next. He said, فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ he said, فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مَا مَعَهُ مِنَ الْإِيمَانِ وَخَوْفِ اللَّهِ وَرَجَاءِ ثَوَابِ وَخَوْفِ عِقَابِهِ يَحُثُّهُ عَلَى التَّأَسِّبِ الرَّسُولِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمِ He said, because the faith that is with, the faith, the iman that is with such a person and the fear of Allah and the hope of his reward and the fear of his punishment, it encourages such an individual to imitate the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. May Allah Azawajal bless us to be from amongst them. I just want to read and close Ikhwan from the tafsir of Sheikh ibn Uthaymeen rahimahullah about being proactive and getting busy when giving da'wah and alhamdulillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed Ahl sunnah in this city because Ahl sunnah you see them out every week walillah alhamdulillah minna downtown giving da'wah to the non-Muslims so far in the month of Ramadan, alhamdulillah, and it was a few days before Ramadan, now in the last 19 days, we've had 190 people accept Islam with us. I don't know if there's an example like that in the dunya. Wallahu a'lam. And people want to talk bad about Philly, mention that. Let that go viral. Just at our masjid, 190 people Today? Huh? Yes, I did one Okay, so 191 then. Barakallah <laughs> fikum. 191. Barakallah fikum. Nah, man. The reason why Juraj is saying that because I told him, I said, listen, any slips of the tongue, don't tell me two hours later. <laughs> if I make a mistake, correct it right there. Nah, mi And again, that's because we're brothers. We call people to kitab and sunnah, not to personalities. If I make a mistake, correct it. Barakallah feek. We're Ahl Sunnah. Habidhukum Allah. We don't call people to follow errors. That's why we want all of our brothers and sisters to be educated. But not educated like the Orientalists. Not educated like the Hizbiyin. We want them to be educated like Ahl Hadith. Those people about that Imam Shafi'i said, if you see the people of Hadith, it is like seeing the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nam, where brothers have an understanding of the Arabic language, they can ref refer to the Quran, they can refer to the Sunnah with the tafasir, the classical books of explanation of the Quran, and likewise the explanation of the Sunnah. Let me finish this point, inshallah, before we break our fast. As Sheikh ibn Uthaymin said also, and he mentions other beautiful fawaid, but I just want to highlight this. He said, وَيَدْخُلُ فِي الْأُسْوَةِ الْحَسَنَةِ الدَّعْوَةُ إِلَى دِينِ اللَّهِ Also, what falls under this good example is calling to Allah, calling to the religion of Allah. فَإِنَّ الرَّسُولُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ لَا شَكَّ أَنَّهُ يَدْعُوا إِلَى دِينِ اللَّهِ Verily the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم used to call to the religion of Allah. And Allah said, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرًا أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي Say, O Muhammad, this is my path. I call to Allah upon knowledge, me and those who follow me. Then he said, وَبِهَاذَا نَعْرِفُ أَنَّهُ يَنْبَغِ لِطَالِبِ الْعِلْمِ أَنْ يَكُونَ الشَّاطٍ فِي مُجْتَمَعِهِ لَا نُسْخَةَ كِتَابٍ فَقَطْ Shaykh Ibn Uthaymi said the student of knowledge should be proactive in his community. Yes, all of you, every talib al-ilm. If you know something, you need to be proactive. We need to be out there on those streets, interacting with the people, when we, the people especially that we know, and even those that we don't know. Tell them this is not a life, especially with the youth. We need to be proactive. He said we can't be a copy of a book. Look at that, yes. You can't be a copy of a book. Then you come here, you memorize the book and there's no implementation. Islam, it changed the dunya. These ayat that we're reading, they changed the world. The hadith of the Prophet wasallam, they changed the world. But how did they change the world? When they were implemented and when others were invited to it. And when we saw it in their lives. He said, you can't just be a copy of a book. You need to be proactive. He said, بِمَعْنَ meaning, and يَكُمْ مُحَرِّكًا لِضَمَائِرِ النَّاسِ You have to go out and try and move the hearts of the people. 
and the sense of the people and direct them. And you have to have determination and zeal in trying to rectify the people. You can't say, you know, I'm okay, I'm going to the masjid, you know, they're destroyed. That person doesn't have understanding of the religion of Islam. He said, Hatta la yakun mujarrad nuskha. He said, because we don't want the student of knowledge to be just a copy of a book. He said, لِأَنَّ مُجَرَّدَ نُسْخَةٍ مَا الْفَائِدَ مِنْ He said, if you're just a copy of a book, if you just memorize the book and you're staying at home, you don't go to the masjid, you don't pray with the jama'ah, you're not in interacting with the community. He said, what's the benefit? He said, تَقُولْ وَاللَّهِ حَفِدْتُ مَثَلًا مَدْنَ الزَّادِ وَحَفِدْتُ الْبُلُوغُ الْمَرَامِ وَحَفِدْتُ الْمُنْتَقَى وَحَفِدْتُ مَا أَشْبَهَ ذَلِكْ وَغَايَتُ وَنْ يَقُولْ سَأَجْلِسُ فِي بَيْتِي وَإِنْ جَاءَ أَحَدْ يَسْأَلُنِي عَلَّمْتُ But all he can say is, yani the extent of his da'wah, I'm going to sit in my house and if someone comes to ask me, I'm going to teach them. What's that? Again, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرَ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا In the Messenger of Allah is the best example. Don't tell me scholar so-and-so does that. I don't want to hear it. Because you have some people that come back and say, well, I, I met Sheikh so-and-so. Sheikh so-and-so is not a dalil. لا من قري ولا من بعيد. The dalil is kitab and sunnah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to mix with the people to the extent that when people came to him in the hadith, he didn't even have a guard on his door. He was accessible. And you're in a mountain, people ask, well, where is he? You say, I oh, don't know, I haven't seen him for, you know, the last five weeks. And he's the Imam of the Masjid. And no doubt a person can be ill or go on a holiday. You know, Naji might come back in a month's time and say, yes, you remember when you said such and such? <laughs> Talking about if we're here with no other, barakallahu feekum. Ikhwan, now we have to be proactive. We have to be proactive in educating the people and directing the people. The people, they want the truth. But we have to convey it to them in the right way. Ikhwan, we can't leave it to others. Look, you have masajid, and we mentioned it in, in, in the previous lessons. You have masajid with some graduates, they're inviting the nation of Islam. They're making prayer with the nation of Islam. These graduates are not saying nothing because they want use of their facilities. We don't want use of anyone's facilities. We're going to give you da'wah, you like it, alhamdulillah. You don't like it, we're going to continue with our program. The upper hand is better than the lower hand. We ain't going to nobody begging. May Allah protect us from that. Begging for a salary because when you work for them and when you're, you know, employed by them, obviously you're scared to say certain things. Give a khutbah about the, pro the prohibition of music. You'll see, nam, that person might be unemployed. Nam, claiming unemployment. That is why the upper hand's better than the lower hand. Yes, alhamdulillah, we're inviting. We go to them if they called us. Nam, we had a call the other day in the Dawah Center. New masjid is opening. They said, you know, alhamdulillah, we know you're Salafi. Wallahi, the brother said it. Sheikh Tala was there. He was on speaker. I don't know the brother. He said, he said, you're Hassan Somali, Salafi, right? He said, yes, Salafi. He said, we're opening a new masjid. If they invited us to give the khutbah, you know the, what we're going to talk about? Following Quran, Sunnah, staying away from bid'ah. That's the, it would be the first khutbah in that masjid. Might never invite us back, but alhamdulillah, balagna. Barakallahu feekum. Naam, and we'll pause, inshallah. May Allah grant us all success and continue to bless us. Wallahi, what we're seeing, Ikhwan, here is historical. This should be documented. Sometimes we don't realize what we are in and what we are witnessing and part of until you leave it. When I was in the Maj with Sheikh Mukbir, rahimahullah, the years that we spent with the Sheikh, I didn't understand, no doubt, I knew it was beneficial. He's a scholar of the Sunnah, but I didn't know what I had at the time I had it. I only realized that now. They were golden days. What we are involved in is historical. Don't always make it golden where it's somewhere else and you belittle what you're involved in. Now the brother, he just asked, he said, if you do that today, they call it troublemaking. If you go and you give da'wah and then the people, they do not like what is being stated. SubhanAllah, if that's troublemaking, what about the da'wah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What about the da'wah of the companions? What about the da'wah of the tabi'un? What about the da'wah of the imams of the religion? You know, Shaykh al-Bani, again, just to give a, you know, a, an insight into our scholars. Because, you know, people mention their names, but it's just a name, you know, not really attaching themselves to the essence of their message. Shaykh al-Bani, when he was in Jordan, he wasn't allowed to teach. And I've mentioned this numerous times. Even I had to correct an academic when they were trying to make a differentiation between Shaykh al-Bani and Shaykh al-Islam al-Mujaddin Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah because they were saying 
you know, there's a difference between their methodologies. And I was saying, no, that's your understanding because Shaykh al-Albani, rahimahullah, ba'din, inshallah. Yeah. Shaykh al-Albani, rahimahullah ta'ala, you know, he was prevented from giving da'wah when he was in Jordan. And he done that which he had the ability to do, that which he was able to do. As Allah Azawajal only holds us to account for what we can do. But Shaykh al-Albani, when he was in Jordan, and people used to give the khutbah, because he didn't give the khutbah there, hasab ilmi I don't know if he ever gave a khutbah in Jordan, Allah knows best. You would have to ask the people that are there. That's amazing. Now, I mean, imagine an imam of like that and he can't give the khutbah, right? But when the khatib would mention weak ahadith, he would go to the khatib and say, you've mentioned, what you mentioned in your khutbah, it was a weak hadith. Or it was a fabricated hadith. And some of them, they started disliking Shaykh al-Albani, rahimahullah. And that's from among the reasons and other reasons because there were many ahadith and there are many ahadith that are common upon the tongue of the people. He wrote his famous collection about the collection of weak and fabricated ahadith. Because on the tongues of the people, there were many fabricated ahadith. Now, and when Shaykh al-Albani used to correct them, they, used to, they, they, they started to dislike him. And then they started to malign him. We all know they wrote a book about Sheikh al-Albani called Albani Unveiled. So many of the people of misguidance wrote books about Sheikh al-Albani, disparaging his aqeedah and his methodology, naam, his manhaj. Even the Qutubiyun, the Sururiyun, the Harakiyun, naam, from the Muslim Brotherhood and other than them, they accused Sheikh al-Albani, rahimahullah, of irja, being a murji, like Safar al-Hawali and others, accusing his aqeedah. Shaykh ibn Uthaymin said, the one who accuses Shaykh al-Albani of irja, either he doesn't know irja or he doesn't know Shaykh al-Albani. Not saying that Shaykh al-Albani is infallible, he may make a mistake, no doubt. And the mistake is rejected, but to say that he's a murji, the qawl al-mardud, alfa marra, regardless of who he comes from. Naam. So yes, this is da'wah, no doubt, wisdom and good character and gentleness. Barakallahu feekum. But we all agree that the Prophet had the best character, right? When he went to the polytheists, look how the mushrikun, they, re they, they responded to his call. They called him all types of names because they didn't like the truth that he carried. So they tried to malign his character because they couldn't attack the message. So they started to say he was what? He was a magician. They started to say he was a liar. They started to say he wanted money. They started to say he wanted to be the king. And other than that, well, iyadu billah. Pure fabrication. And the same way that they did that to the Prophet ﷺ, anyone carrying the message of the Prophet ﷺ, those who do not like the truth will try and do the same. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jalla to bless us to die upon Tawheed and the Sunnah. Wa subhanaka Allah wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa